Welcome back to the show, everybody. We got a good one. Let's get right into it. We're going to talk about the fourth industrial revolution and how it's getting more real by the day. You're going to find out. Stay with me. U.S. president meets with the G7. You won't believe what he's talking about. And the BIS Innovation Hub building CBDC bridge and an international settlement platform for central banks. Come on in. Roll that beautiful intro. Here we go. This is Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Subscribe for new content notifications. Now, here's Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show, everybody. You can follow me on Twitter at BackupBradleyAbove at the top of the screen. Everything that we're talking about here, almost $1.5 trillion for the crypto space collectively. It just feels good to say it. Bitcoin coming in at $48,630.34. Ethereum, $1,800. $1,814.69. Cardano killing it at 87 cents and XRP at 57 cents, 0.5743 right now, up 30.41% on the seven day for xrp looking right here let's get started the world bank talking about last january blockchain how the fourth industrial revolution can help accelerate progress towards developments uh, i think we all know i made it clear the other day i played a clip from uh brian brooks the former head of the occ who made it very clear that you cannot have blockchain or distributed ledger technology without crypto with it so anyone who tries to separate the two is really not understanding the tech, right? That's really where we're at here. So with that being said, let's build the narrative because we really are on the path of the fourth industrial revolution. And we want to see the U.S. make a great statement and be an innovator and a leader in this space. I believe they will be, and you're going to see evidence of that. Plus, I believe you're going to see evidence of the central banking system about to show us all what may be coming to light on their end of things. Let's go ahead and get started. Bank of International Settlements Central Bank speech from Nina Stoyonova. I don't know if I said that wrong. Forgive me if I did. Uh, forthcoming new developments in the area of payment services and digitalization. Now, I covered this this morning, but what's interesting about this is that made me think when I saw this article, and it really just an overview saying, we're, we're doing it, right? We're working on digitalizing everything, getting everything upgraded to new infrastructure, new system, the whole bit. And it's fantastic. But what it made me think of is like, hey, what's going on with the uh, BIS Innovation Hub? You know, the BIS being the central bank of central banks, basically. Uh, it's like they're working on uh, creating FinTech Hub over the last few years, and they've been working on innovating payments, cross-border settlement, and things of that nature. Benoit Coyier has been very outspoken about this, but let's just keep going because what does the 2122 work program tell us? Well, I think you're going to like what it tells us because we're going to start right here on page four and it lays out mapping project projects across existing centers and themes. And here we see, uh, I want to go right to where I want to focus here is on number three, CBDC central bank money on tokenized platforms, Helvetia, which is already a working project, right? And then going forward to the next step, which is hazed out, which says new projects for 2122 platform for settling cross border payments using multiple with CBDC. Then it also says what is actually an existing project right now and continuing into 2122 multiple CBDC bridge. Wow. You know, I couldn't help but think of the World Economic Forum document from last January in 2020 and how it shows XRP as a bridge to wholesale C CBDC settlement for inter and interbank payments and settlements for central banks. Damn, isn't that interesting? What's even more interesting is if we go down the document here through the different things by subtech and reg tech, that means supervisory tech that would be the uh, technology used that, to help automate supervision over top of markets. Reg tech being regulation that could be technology built into a regulation built into technology for projects. So, OK, now coming down here, let's take a look at this. 
in this section, we know that Project Helvetia, we've reported on it here, covered it here, undertaken with the Swiss National Bank, SMB, the Financial Infrastructure Operator 6, demonstrates the functional feasibility and legal robustness of settling tokenized assets with the wholesale CBDC proof of concept one, and through linking digital ledger technology platform to existing payment systems proof of concept two in a near live setup. The experiment should not be inter- interpreted as an indication that the SMB will issue a wholesale CBDC, right? Then we come down here to the other highlighted section that we covered up top, and it says multiple CBDC bridge. Listen to this. Builds on the experience of Intheon Lion Rock, a project of Hong Kong Monetary Authority and Bank of Thailand, to support the adoption of DLT to facilitate real-time cross-border fund transfers, atomic payment versus payment for foreign exchange transactions. The project also intends to enhance cross-border corridor network prototype to support CBDCs of other central banks. That, to me, is incredible that that is ongoing. And we've reported on the Intheon project uh, before, but we're going to talk about that in just a second. But let's look at the project that is looking to be a new project to continue in 21 to 22, which honestly become extensions of Project Helvetia and what they're doing with the multiple bridge, CBDC bridge. And then obviously the next step or next phase of it is a platform for settling cross-border payments using multiple wholesale CBDCs, which would give us in turn what the World Economic Forum reported on in 2020. Now, coming back to this, let's just check it out. Explores the creation of an international settlement platform. Interesting. On to which central banks would issue multiple wholesale CBDCs. Really? Well, damn, you know, I got to be honest with you. That sounds a lot just like this guy, what he said. I mean, certainly we do know of central banks looking at the XRP ledger as open source technology to issue stable coins using the XRP ledger. And that may happen. And frankly, it's open source technology. You know, we don't even necessarily have to be involved with that. Now, I said this two days ago. I mean, certainly we do know of central banks looking at the XRP ledger as open source technology to issue stable coins using the XRP ledger. Well, there you have it. I apologize about the volume the first time. I just wanted to turn it up for you so you could hear it the second time. All right. So looking at that, he just said that back in November, it wasn't two days ago, it was at the time, but back in November of 2020, he said, Brad Garlinghouse, that the Central banks are looking to issue stable coins off the XRP ledger open source technology. Well, what does this say? Platform for settling cross-border payments using multiple wholesale CBDCs. Explore the creation of an international settlement platform onto which central banks would issue multiple wholesale CBDCs. You don't say. Regulated banks and payment service providers would then use the platform as a common settlement infrastructure, enabling participants to purchase, exchange, transact, and redeem these different CBDCs. I'll be damned. You know, <laughs> you can't, you just can't make this up. And in fact, let me build on that thought and idea. Let's listen to what Brian Brooks said at his time at acting or when he was the acting comptroller of currency and became the head of the comptroller of currency for a time. And let's just listen to what he says here. I think you're going to like it a lot about some of the solutions they've been hearing on the back end behind the scenes. There are a bunch of solutions that I've heard people talk about on this. One would be imagine a world where there was a central government blockchain and all other chains sort of connected to it. And the government blockchain allowed the government to make its own changes. And as it saw errors in the code or discriminatory features, it could simply go in directly and fix them. I mean, (laughs) how much more do we need to say? Uh, again, this is from the BIS Innovation Hub for 2122, and this is a project that will be a new project to pursue as an extension of an ongoing work from Project Helvetia and the multiple CBDC bridge effort with Intheon, Lion Rock. Let me talk about that for a second, okay? So here we have this article as a reminder here, Hong Kong and Thailand pilot 
DLT-based project for cross-border payments, Hong Kong and Thailand. Central banks have stepped closer to implementing a joint central bank digital currency project for cross-border payments. It says here, Hong Kong's Thailand Central Bank has stepped closer into implementing a joint central bank digital currency for cross-border payments. They've been working with the Hong Kong Monetary Authority and the Bank of Thailand, BOT, officially announced the outcomes of a joint CBDC research uh, project called uh, Intheon, in, Inthanon, I guess it is, and Lion Rock. Alongside publishing a joint press release, the banks have issued a 90-page report providing exhaustive analysis and per, of the risk and the benefits of CBDCs we all know to drill. In 2019, uh, Hong Kong Monetary Authority and Bank of Thailand initiated Inthanon and Lion Rock project back in May uh, of that year. Banks completed the joint initiative by December of 2019, official announcement said, said. And it says here that if you look a little further, Thailand featured a proof of concept prototype based on distributed ledger technology, particularly Thai participants included banks like Bangkok Bank, Siam Commercial Bank, which is a partner to Ripple, right? Let's just cover that. Ripple powers cross-border B2B payments for Thai Bank, Siam Commercial Bank, SCB. And they have a very deep relationship, the two of those. Okay, so now coming back to here, it does go on to say CBDC project is based on R3 Quarters blockchain platform for which we have a connection with as well. If they're building on the quarter platform of R3, they have access to this quarter settler, which has the option for digital asset settlement of XRP, which they do intend to expand to other digital assets in the future as well. So either way, we're tied into this Inthanon and Lion Rock project that we're hearing about at this stage, right? Which is pretty interesting. The multiple CBDC stage, which is already an existing project and continuing into 2122. As I said, what these things, you know, you can clearly see are becoming a phasing in and rolling these things out. And it just, it, it, it's remarkable to see this actually happening, to be honest with you. And the thought and notion that, you know, like what Brian Brooks is saying is very similar to an international settlement platform that they're talking about here for the next. Uh, phase into this year and next year for a central bank payment system. That is remarkable to me. And then I look here, remind everybody just very quickly of the Ripple commercial we had back in 2019 showing Japanese yen being sent and then the vase gets broke. The guy's in trouble. He's got to ask for money from home. They send it. And he sends Thai bot back and it runs on Ripple. There it is. And like I said, you know, you look at the World Economic Forum from last year. There's a narrative here and it's not coming from a YouTuber. I'm reading their narrative. This isn't mine. This is not my narrative. This is their narrative. I'm just finding the stuff and talking about it. Right. They're telling us what's going on. And in the meantime, we have the President of the United States, Biden, is now working with his first meeting with the G7. And it's pretty interesting in this vir virtual engagement with leaders of the world. Leading Democrat Democratic market economies will provide an opportunity for President Biden to discuss plans to defeat the pandemic and rebuild the global economy. You know, one of those things that I think you need to rebuild that is something like XRP in the XRP ledger that can help bring the velocity of money to a deliberately shut down economy. Now, that is not debatable. It is exactly what has happened there. However, domestically at home, while the current president is over there uh, establishing his rapport and his uh, uh, relationship with the rest of the countries in the G7, um, and he's uh, virtual, but while he's doing that, and he's obviously been a career politician, so they know where he stands on quite a bit of things. So I don't think it's too much of an introduction, right? So at the end of the day, while he's working on that on the international level, we still have the domestic case with the SEC here at home with the market regulator against Ripple for XRP being an unledged, uh, unregistered security, right? So then we need this guy to get confirmed. And hopefully now the political uh, winds have blown in such a way that we can actually get down to doing all of the country's business and get people like Gary Gensler confirmed in the respective agency, SEC, so we can get some progress and clarity on an entire asset class, not just Ripple and XRP, because we need a unified framework for the entire 
asset class. So, but listen here before we go, because this is the next hurdle that we got to get over here at home. Is the thing that they're using most, most right now, and that's just an alternative for Swift that doesn't even use their coin. So Hugo was asked about uh, the token XRP and whether I think it's a non-compliant security. I've spoken publicly. Yes, I do think it's a non-compliant security. Um, but this and there you have it. Um, you know, Gary Gensler uh, looking to be confirmed soon, I would imagine, for the SEC. Absolutely to the point of being extremely casual about the idea that it's not even a debate to him that XRP is, in fact, an unregistered security. However, I don't believe it getting a security designation means that it harms its full scale intended use. I believe that they could come up with a settlement and a legal decision that works for all parties and creates the kind of designation that, again, that allows the asset to work for its full and scale, full scale intended use, but gives the financial system and the sophisticated financial institutions the kind of comfort and security, pun intended, to let them know that they are safe to use this new asset and they don't have to worry about any loopholes or s s spillover shocks from using a new asset in this system. And that, I believe, is why it's so important we get that legal clarity on this case. It isn't so much what they call it. It's just how they how they go through this and how it affects us at the end of the day. And we'll be Will we be able to purchase the asset in the same manner that we always have been? That remains to be seen. And if it's up to Gary Gensler, it's hard to say whether that answers a yes. That's going to do it for me. Hit the like and subscribe. Leave a comment below. The BIS is building a new international settlement platform. Come on in. Make sure you check out all the links in the description section and the comment box. There's really great deals in there for each and every one of you, and they are trusted, vetted links. I'll catch you on the next one.